why do most Christians support Israel? Why is it so controversial? And what is Israel's role in end time prophecy? Let's check it out. What's up, everybody? My name is Joshua, and we are a bold follower, and we're going to try and answer those three questions today. The first one we're going to jump into is why do Christians tend to love and support Israel so much? As a uh, recent statistic showed that 80% of Christians in America supported Israel. But why? Um, now, before we start, I want to say that there's a lot of different schools of thought on all these topics. This is not the only way to think about it. There are Christians who don't support Israel. They have this kind of replacement theology. There's some that just don't care either way. And there's some that go overboard with fanaticism towards Israel. So, um, <laughs> and I don't want to make this super political, okay? I hate politics, um, but I hate violence even more on either side. Um, so I don't support any violent act on any side for any reason. And it's so sad how extremists have um, really escalated the conflict over there. Um, and we'll talk a little more about that at the end and give you guys uh, some steps if you want to support um, what's going on over there. But the answer to that is basically twofold, the, the Christian view. You know, we believe that Israel is God's chosen people and that Israel is important in end time prophecy. Um, and that, of course, is controversial, which we'll also talk about. So I'm going to do real quick recap. Like all of these could be its own massive study. But essentially, God made promises of, from Genesis and Adam to Noah, to Abraham, at which point those promises are more lined out. They'd be considered a covenant at this point. God makes a covenant with Abraham and then Isaac and then Jacob. And Jacob has 12 children, 12 sons, and those sons become the tribes um, of Israel. And those are the tribes to which most people, most people connect their lineage if they consider themselves um, Jewish or Israel by, by bloodline to one of these tribes. Um, and that would include, you know, people like King David and, and the kings and all these different things that we read about. So, and within that as well is, is uh, you know, a group called the Hebrews. I don't really want to get too, too technical, but within all those different uh, scenarios are uh, a stages that go in and out between being nomads, slaves, prosper, prosperous kingdoms, divided kingdoms, being diverse, uh, dispersed worldwide, and even tragedy. Um, however, recently, um, there have been some, um, kind of coming back into to geographic location. Um, a lot of people have come back to where they believe their roots are in the nation of Israel. Since Israel is now a recognized state, um, and a physical location there on the Mediterranean, um, and then also recognize that um, as a Christian, we uh, the, we have to look at, at um, uh, people that say that they're Israelite or Jewish or however they want to identify themselves, Hebraic, um, that that could mean a variety of different things. And I don't want to paint the brush too, too broadly, but it could be elements like religion, language, culture, nation, geography, any combination of more than one of them or just one of them. So when somebody says, um, you know, uh, they're Jewish, that could mean any one of those or more. And then somebody says like they're related, you know, they're, they consider themselves Israel, part of the nation of Israel, it could be any of these. So, so there's that. So, but we believe that uh, Israel is God's chosen people. And there's so many verses, Deuteronomy 7, 6, he says, um, and I'm just going to skip a, a little bit, but he talks about God has chosen you out of all the people on the face of the earth to be his people, his treasured possession. We see later in 1 Kings 8:53, he says, You have separated them, talking about the Israelites, from all the peoples of the earth as your inheritance. Meaning not just there, but there's an inheritance, meaning in the future. Uh, we see this idea in 2 Samuel 7, 24, For you have established yourself, your people Israel, who will be your people forever. And there's a lot of emphasis, there's other verses that talk about that forever thing. See, that's that's where uh, there's a lot about, it talks about a um, an everlasting covenant, Psalms 105, 8. Uh, 15 we see verses in Jeremiah and then first Kings 10 9 says again because the Lord loved Israel forever and so we have a lot of these emphasis on the forever uh, they were the chosen people they are the chosen people so when we read our Bible and we see those verses we recognize that that it is them Paul says in plain terms in Romans 11 1 1 and 2 
He says in 11, 1, it's that God has not rejected his people. Has he? May it never be, for I am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. And then again, the next verse, he says, God has not rejected his people for whom he foreknew. And then he goes on and talks about just this idea of, of, of it's a forever thing, that you don't necessarily forget your identity. Um, it is super important that we understand that they were God's chosen people, they are God's chosen people. And a lot of times we act on, well, what's a practical step for that? I mean, it's not super specific, but we do have things like Psalms 122.6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Um, May all who love this city prosper. We have verses like that, as well as verses in Genesis 12.3, and I will bless those who bless you, and the one who curses you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. And each one of those can be, be divided into their own subject. Just a real quick recap of it. That's why most Christians support and love uh, Israel. Now, I remember that it's controversial. So let's talk about why it's controversial. Why is it controversial to support Israel? Now, I remember that there's a bunch of different, I mean, I don't want to say hodgepodge, but it's, 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 a, mis, it's, it's a mixed match. It's a combination of, of, you know, these different things, religion, culture, national, uh, nation, geography, language. There's all these different things that could be in that name, Israel. There's a lot of different things. And as, as Christians, we may support them in any of these ways. Um, and so, though there's many exceptions, the idea is the covenants that God made with Israel, some of those covenants, some of those promises, pertain to a specific people group in a geographic location and a, a recognized nation. So, when people understand supporting Israel, right, as, as a people group, as a culture, as, you know, it's, they also, some of them um, make that translation, that jump, which isn't a far jump, to be honest, for the nation, the physical nation located in the area uh, that we see it in today. The scriptures, the, the idea would be that the scriptures entitle Israel to the literal physical land. That's the thought. And that's just part of the promises from their ancestors. So they're basically entitled to it. So giving up that would be in violation of God's law, holding this perspective. And since that land is now recognized and given a title and a specific location outlined on a map with borders, um, then many people support that nation. Um, and inevitably, you're gonna to have to engage in different things like diplomacy, economy, politics, and conflict. The worst part is sometimes it'll, you know, there's, there's what's going on now, the, the wars. And because other people have the same belief for their beliefs, they believe that God gave them that land. And so in the same thing, they believe it'd be a violation to give it up. And so you have this struggle and I don't want to go too much into it because it's been a long, long time war. Basically, they both believe that it's their land. Um, and as, as someone who supports Israel, that would then put you in a position to basically have to kind of make a choice on deciding how do you support who you support. And the greatest way to do that, I believe, is, is number one, the priority is stop, stop the killing, stop, stop the atrocities, all that. But we'll talk about that later as well. Um, we asked about, well, what is Israel's part in the future. What is it about end time prophecy, right? What's going to happen with Israel? What are we supposed to look at when we look at over there? Um, uh, so remember, remember how I mentioned that now that it's become a state, some people are moving back. Uh, so that's, that's all part of scripture. There's actually verses in Ezekiel 37 and 38 and other places. It talks about a sign of the end times is the Jews, the, the Israelites who had been scattered, lost their identity, coming back to find their identity in a physical location in the nation, newly established, reestablished nation of Israel. Um, and I have an entire video, if you want to watch it, that talks about some of the, um, just a couple fulfilled prophecies in real time. It's really interesting because there's a coin that was minted in Jerusalem with images of Donald Trump and King Cyrus and a third temple. That's the exact value of a half shekel, which is what would be needed for an adult male to enter a third temple. But what's weird is that this third temple doesn't exist yet. So it, it talks about all these prophecies that are coming to fruition and some of the prophecies that are going to come um, within Israel 
Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that because that's its own thing. And there is a lot of speculation, so there's a lot of speculation. And we don't know the order, but we do know some other things that we are going to see over there is a false peace. We're going to see an antichrist. We're going to see two prophets. They're going to preach. They're also going to die. And they're going to be, uh, they're going to come back to life. And we see, um, it's, it's so basically at some point there will be control, uh, uh, the Jewish control of the Holy Land. And ultimately, of course, a, a, a victory of Jesus. But before then, we talk about, there's other things like, you ever heard the word Armageddon? Um, it's this idea of uh, a massive war in a particular spot in northern in northern Israel. Many people assume that to say the hill um, in, in uh, Medido. It's, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that terrible. But it's a location in northern uh, northern. Israel. And so a lot of times when people look at this, they interpret, well, is it supposed to be meant literally or it's supposed to be meant figuratively or spiritually or whatever? If it's physical, then all of these would be in the physical location of Israel. Um, and a lot of things point to, unless scripture specifically makes a good case that it shouldn't be taken literally, you should probably take it literally. So a lot of, that's why a lot of people kind of have this this thought. So basically a big, big war, uh, uh, some northern nature, nation will attack, other nations will attack. If you can name those nations, people make make arguments, the ones that exist now. Um, uh, and then Israel is going to be basically almost defeated. But the Bible says, and this, this is kind of like near the very end of the end of the end of all that stuff, is as they're about to be defeated, Jesus himself comes in and intervenes. It says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. He's going to come down, he's going to defeat the, pro, uh, the false prophets, the Antichrist, binding Satan for a thousand years, and then we'll see King, the King of King and Lord of Lords, Jesus, as who he is. There's also other events. It, end time prophecy is really crazy. Like It's going to get worse before it gets better. Whatever view you hold, post-trib, mid-trib, pan-trib, it's all going to work out. There's all all different views. It's going to get worse before it gets better. This is not a, a survey on all eschatology and end times. This is just with the, the people of Israel. There's another thing that says in Zechariah 13.6, uh, or sorry, starts of 7, you talk about two-thirds of Israel perishing. Um, and then the one-third that remain uh, go through a, a type of fire, or whatever that looks like. But those, those last one third will turn to the Messiah, Jesus Christ, and acknowledge him. It says that they're going to notice the wounds on his hand and his feet. And they're going to realize that the Jesus whom they originally rejected and, um, and over 2,000, they're going to realize that that's the Messiah. And over 2,000 years of blindness is just going to come off. And those of us who are raptured are going to unite and, and, and join them. Um, in this to watch the other end time events unfold and there is so much more about that prophecy um, I actually cover that later in, in a video um, I talk about some of the things that happen with Jesus second coming But that's just specifically directed towards Israel why most Christians support Israel Which is because they believe they're their chosen people the controversy because um, to support Israel often means supporting a physical nation and support a nation involves all those complicated tasks and then what's their role in the end times? Um, there's a couple different things that they're going to do, but basically it's a lot of battlefield, um, a lot of conflict that's going to happen in that location, which we're already seeing. And um, before I end, I just in light of, of uh, just all the things that are happening in Israel and whatever you feel about them, um, let's just join together in prayer. Um, and support, whatever that looks like, of, of anyone who's a victim of, of any innocent attack and violence on either side. Um, death is not good. Killing is not good. Murder is not good. So we need to pray to end the fighting and end the terrorism and end the atrocities um, and end the violence. This is just... Uh... We, we left a link, uh, there's a link to the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. Um, you can, I mean, you don't have to use them, but it's it's one that we've donated to in the past, and um, they do good work, and it's a good option for you if you felt led to support, um, you know, these families uh, that are going through all these things. But God has not forsaken and forgotten Israel and they're still an important part of the end time they're still flesh and blood people um, like you and me and um, ultimately 
um, Jesus is going to come back and he is going to restore not just Jerusalem but the world and all those who trust in him. So I, I hope you learned something. Um, I hope this was beneficial to you. Um, if you want me to cover any other topics, please let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, uh, bless you guys. Uh, peace.